Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've last posted. I've actually been super busy with applying for medical school this summer. So it's super exciting, but also can be very challenging. And I've been swamped with keeping up with everything that I need to do to get into medical school this year. And one of those things is the situational judgment test called CASPER. I actually took this test last month and I scored a fourth quartile, which is super exciting. So the CASPER videos that I'm gonna be making is going to be a two-part series. The first video, which is what you're watching right now, is going to be about what the Casper test really tests you on and also the format. Make sure you subscribe because my next video, which is going to be coming out really soon, is going to be on all the tips and tricks that I used to ace my Casper test in less than a week. So without further ado, let's get into this video. First, we're going to be talking about what the Casper test really tests you on. So as I mentioned, CASPER is a situational judgment test. So it's going to be testing your situational judgment as well as your professional competencies. Now these competencies are mainly non-academic related and are crucial for success in both healthcare and medical settings. So the exam mainly evaluates your interpersonal skills, ethical reasoning, empathy, problem solving, and resilience through realistic scenarios that require thoughtful and reflective responses. So this test is basically going to help admissions committees identify candidates that obviously are um, very intelligent in the classroom, but also have that emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills that are necessary as a provider, you know, while you're um, breaking down really complex diagnoses to patients or supporting them through some of their most vulnerable times. Now we're going to move into the format of the exam. There is basically two parts to the exam. There's a video portion and then there is a written portion. So the video portion is basically kind of an interview style. You're going to be recording your answers rather than typing them out. On the other hand, the written portion is going to be a typed response. So let's take a look at both of these sections in a bit more detail. For the video portion or the part that you are going to be speaking your answers, they're going to consist of six scenarios. Two of them are word-based and four of them are going to be um, video-based. So what this means is the word-based scenarios are going to be kind of presented like a little paragraph on the screen and you're going to read the issue at hand and get an understanding as to um, what, what you're going to be addressing. Video-based scenarios on the other hand are going to be like a little movie that you're going to watch. So uh, make sure you pay attention to the video because you cannot replay it. You can only watch it once. Um, and basically actors are just going to be acting out the scenario scenario and then asking you at the end, what would you do? Um, so you're going to get a sense of what the issue is at hand, regardless of the type of way that it's presented, but just keep in mind that it can be presented in both ways. So now for the timing for the video based scenarios, um, it's going to sound kind of harsh, but just bear with me. Once you practice, like you're going to be fine. So don't worry about that. But basically when the scenario pops up on your screen, whether it's word based or video based, you're going to have 30 seconds to read the word based scenario or however long the video is, you're going to have um, that amount of time to watch the video. Then you're going to have an additional 30 seconds to reflect on whatever you just um, read or watched. So kind of reflect on what you would do or what really went on, what was the issue at hand. And then after that, a question is going to pop up on your screen and it's going to be the question that they want you to record yourself and answer. So you're going to have 10 seconds to read the question and you know think about how you want to answer this question. And then once the 10 seconds are over, your video automatically starts recording. So you don't hit record or anything, it just automatically goes and you have 60 seconds to get through your answer. So although this timing may sound kind of quick or fast paced or even harsh at times, just know that your answer does not have to be perfect. If you know you get cut off at the end, you're in mid sentence and your video stops recording, don't worry, they totally get that that kind of thing happens. So just really try your best to say as much as you can in that 60 second period of time. So then after that first question, you're going to have another question appear on your screen and you're gonna have 10 seconds again to read the question and then 60 seconds to answer. So for each scenario in the um, video based section, you are going to have two questions. Okay, so now you've completed your video section and half of the exam is over and you're wondering what comes next. 
So after the video section, you get a 10 minute optional break. So you can get up out of your seat, you can go to the bathroom, you can stretch, get a snack, whatever you wanna do. And then after that 10 minute break, you're gonna come back and again, verify your ID and everything. And then you're gonna begin your written scenarios. So these are the ones that you're going to actually be typing out your answers, not recording it like an interview style. So for the written portion, you're actually gonna have eight scenarios, not six like the video um, portion. And three of them are going to be word-based and five of them are going to be video-based. So again, the word-based are going to be presented like a paragraph on your screen and the video-based ones are gonna be ones that you're basically like watching a little movie. Now keep in mind that after four written scenarios, you're gonna have another optional break, which is five minutes to go to the bathroom or do whatever you need to do. And then you're gonna come back and resume um, the last four scenarios before you're done with your exam. So now let's talk timing for the written portion. So it kind of is similar to the video portion. First, you start off with either a word-based or video-based scenario. You have 30 seconds to read it or watch the video, whichever way it's presented. And then you're gonna have 30 seconds to reflect on the scenario. But now for the questions, immediately after your reflection period, all the questions are going to appear at the same time and you're going to have three questions, not two. And so you can basically read the questions in whatever order you want. You can answer them in whatever order you want. But I would recommend reading all three of the questions before you start answering so that you don't accidentally answer like the second question in the first question's response. Now for all three questions, you have a total of five minutes. So this might seem like a time crunch and it kind of is. So I would recommend allotting about 90 seconds for each of your questions and just kind of try to aim for like four sentences if you can a paragraph for each of your responses so you don't need to write a full-blown essay just try to answer the question in about three to five sentences so that's really the format of the Casper exam. Now you know kind of what the Casper test is all about. And I definitely recommend using these timings to practice some questions and get a feel for the pace of how fast you need to answer or maybe how fast you need to be typing if you need to improve on that as well. And on that note, I wanted to talk a little bit about how long should you really study for this test? That's really a question that, you know, I had myself while I was studying and I saw a lot of discrepancies on the internet about it. Some people were getting fourth quartile without studying at all. And then some people were studying for months and getting first quartile. So I found that what worked for me is definitely studying. I think it's a test that even if you have great moral character and great interpersonal skills, or, you know, you're a very empathetic and compassionate person, Sometimes it's hard to just navigate the timing and, you know, maybe your typing skills need to improve or maybe you're just a bit shy on camera. So um, those are all the things that you should consider when preparing for this exam. So I would definitely recommend studying. And for the number of days, I would say I study for about seven days. I personally did about three to four scenarios per day. So I practiced both written scenarios, I practiced video-based scenarios, I recorded myself. Obviously, you know, three to four scenarios a day is like, what, 15 to 20 minutes. So it's definitely not a lot of time to spend there, but it's definitely going to be very helpful once exam day comes. So um, yeah, that's all the tips that I have for you guys today. I, you know, I'm definitely sending good vibes your way as you prepare for the Casper exam and, you know, navigate the medical school admissions route. I know it can be very stressful. So just know that I'm here for you and do not forget to subscribe because my video on the tips and tricks will be coming out very soon. Trust me, you don't want to miss it, especially if you're on a time crunch. I'm really going to be giving you the tips that I use that you definitely cannot find on the internet, but I found that it worked for me. Um, so yeah, that's all I had for you guys today and stay tuned.